Welcome to Hope for the Uprooted. This is Susan, and I'm delighted that you join me today. I love the pleasure of your company because you matter to me, and knowing that you're listening just makes my day. I always pray about what God would want me to share in a podcast, always bringing you hope and encouragement, and Today is going to be something a little out of the box. I'm going to tell you a story. I am a visual learner, and I love stories and visuals that help me uh, get the big picture or understand more clearly. Something I can remember or wrap my heart around and my head around. And I am going to tell you a story today about a teacup. And I don't know where I read this, and gosh, I've had this for years and years and often refer to it, and I thought today, my goodness, this is the perfect thing to share for hope and encouragement. And so just bear with me, because sometimes when I tell a story, it becomes kind of um, whimsical and maybe a little fantasy, but I think you will get the message. There was a woman who went to an antique store because she loved teacups, and she loved to go to antique stores and buy teacups. And she spotted one on the shelf, and she asked the lady behind the counter, May I see that? I've never seen a cup so beautiful, and I'd love to add it to my collection. And as the lady handed it to her, suddenly the teacup spoke. You don't understand, it said. I haven't always been a teacup. There was a time when I was just a lump of red clay. My master took me and rolled me and pounded me, and I yelled out, Don't do that. I don't like that. Let me alone. But he only smiled and gently said, Not yet. Then wham! I was placed on a spinning wheel, and suddenly I was spun around and around and around. Stop it, I said. I'm getting so dizzy, I'm going to be sick, I screamed. But the master only nodded and said quietly, not yet. He spun me and and poked me and prodded me and shaped me in, in the most unusual form. And then he put me in the oven. And I have never felt so much heat. I yelled and knocked and pounded at the door. Help! Get me out of here! I could see him through the opening, and I could read his lips as he shook his head from side to side. Not yet. And when I thought I couldn't bear it another minute, the door opened. And the potter carefully took me out and put me on the shelf, and I began to cool. Oh, that felt so good. Ah, this is much better, I thought. But after I cooled, he picked me up. He brushed and painted me all over. The fumes were horrible. I thought I would gag. Oh, please, stop, stop, I cried. He only shook his head and said, Not yet. Then suddenly he put me back in the oven. Only it was not like the first time. This was twice as hot, and I just knew I was going to suffocate. I screamed, I cried, I hollered. I was convinced I would never make it. I was ready to give up. And just then the door opened, and he took me out and placed me on the shelf where I cooled and waited and waited, wondering what is he going to do next. An hour later, he handed me a mirror and said, Look at yourself. And I did. 
I said, oh, that's not me. That couldn't be me. It's beautiful. I'm beautiful. Quietly, he spoke. I want you to remember, he said. I know it hurt to be rolled and pounded and patted, but had I just left you alone, you would have dried up. I know it made you dizzy to spin around on the wheel, but if I had stopped, you would have crumbled. I know it hurt, and it was hot in the oven, but if I hadn't put you there, you would have cracked. I know the fumes were bad when I brushed and painted you all over, but if I hadn't done that, you never would have had resilience and sturdiness. You wouldn't have had any color in your life. If I hadn't put you back in that oven for the second time, you wouldn't have survived for long because you would not have held together. Now you are a finished product. Now you are what I had in mind when I first began with you. Oh, my friends, the moral of this little story is this. Listen up. God knows what he's doing in each of us. He is the potter. He is our master potter, and we are his clay. He will mold us and make us and expose us to just enough pressure of just the right kind that we may be made into a flawless piece of work to fulfill his plan, his purpose, and his will. So when life seems hard and you are being pounded and padded and pushed beyond endurance, when your world seems to be spinning out of control, when you feel like you're in a fiery furnace of trials, when life seems to stink, try this. Brew a cup of your favorite tea in your prettiest teacup or a cup of coffee in your prettiest coffee mug. Sit down And think on this story. And then perhaps you might want to have a little talk, a little prayer with the Master Potter. Don't you just love the moral of that story? How many times this past year have we felt like We were spinning out of control, like the world was spinning out of control. How many times have you felt like you were going through a furnace of trials, economic trials, marriage issues, parenting hardships? Perhaps you've been through hurricanes and fires and the winds and the storms. Oh, goodness, I think of all of you across the nation that in some way or another have suffered and gone through hardships in the past year. And there have been times I know that life has felt out of control and hard and you have been pushed almost beyond or perhaps beyond endurance. And also, I know there have been times when you have felt that life just stinks, that this wasn't what you signed up for. And yet, it is what it is. And it is upon you, and it is circumstances for many of you that is beyond your control. Oh, my friends, I know that a lot of times... We question our value and our worth. We feel like we may have lost our purpose and we're not useful but useless. 
Perhaps you feel that you've lost your pizzazz. Perhaps you felt like you've lost a little bit of yourself along the way. It's been a hard last year with the pandemic. It's been a hard year with job loss, with parenting and trying to work from home, the stress on marriage, the stress on fear of the unknown, the stress of sickness for many, the stress and hardship and pain and suffering of death. I get it. I get it. I've watched the news once too often and turned it off. I've had the whole world closing in on me. And I have looked up and said, Oh, my Lord, this has been a year of change for me and for all of us. And I think about this story and I think about how God, our master potter, has molded me, has molded you. We have gone through the fiery ovens. We have been pounded, many of us, by hardships, loss of normalcy, loss of routine and schedule. We have suffered through uh, the pain of watching those we love suffer through illness, with COVID, or through death. We've watched the residual effects on our marriage. We've watched anger and tempers rise. We've, we've lived through being uh, short patients with our children. We've lived through times where we had no idea how we would respond. And a lot of times we didn't respond well. I didn't respond well. A lot of times I reacted rather than responded, said things I shouldn't have said, made bad choices. Actually, at some time, I, my fear of the unknown would consume me. And I know you've been there too. My friends, I want to read to you out of Jeremiah, just a short little uh, Jeremiah 18, verse 6, to, to just know that everything I ever share with you is rooted and grounded in God's Word, and the stories can come so eloquently and beautifully from His Word as a visual, practical application. And this is what it says. Behold, like the clay in the potter's hands, so are you in my hand. And sometimes I've resisted his molding me. Sometimes he has molded me on a hard day in a direction that I had no plans of going, of being molded, of being shaped. And yet out of the fiery furnace... We either become bitter or we become better. We become that, like that beautiful teacup where we say, "Ah, that couldn't be me. And yet God has made you and formed you and brought you through the trials and the hard times. And you are beautiful. Because you are stronger, you are more resilient, you have learned valuable lessons that you could have learned no other way. You've learned a lot about yourself. You've learned your weaknesses and your strengths. I know I have. And I know I'm stronger, that, I'm, that I've come out of that furnace, that I have come out of that um, molding process and I am stronger and I pray that you too will be or become a stronger person deeper in trust in the Lord a deeper faith a deeper hope a deeper understanding that it is God and God alone that orchestrates your day 
not the outward circumstances that go on around you, but the choice you make inside to stand strong and stand sturdy and hold your head up and move forward. And it is because God is at work in you. And you may say, oh, but Susan, my teacup or my coffee cup is imperfect. <clears throat> you may say it has cracks and it has chips over the years. Yes, I know. I collect teacups. Do you know that over the years, it's my oldest teacups that have withstood the trials and the pain and the suffering of life? And it is the cracks and the chips that let God's light come through. I feel many times like that broken, cracked, chipped teacup. And yet, there is character that is made through that. Don't focus on your imperfections. God uses them to bring others to you. It is through the cracks. It is through uh, the imperfections that his light shines through. I just had a feeling you'd say, oh yeah, but I'm not beautiful. I'm so imperfect. Well, honey, we all are. And the older we get and the more we weather life, we're going to have a couple of chips and a couple of cracks. But God is in the cracks. And it is His light that will come through. Let His light shine through you. And sometimes, sometimes uh, you feel like, oh my goodness, my my tea in my teacup, it, you know, it's, it's lukewarm because of everything that life has shoveled out at me and put on me and covered me with that my tea is lukewarm and it's cold. In other words, I'm kind of lukewarm. I'm wavering. I'm not um, as strong as I want to be. I'm not on fire for the Lord. Don't ever let your tea lose its flavor or its zip. Don't ever let, in other words, the who that you are inside lose that connection with Jesus Christ. The flavor he brings to your life. The dazzle and sparkle that he gives you when you choose joy. Yes, there are times when my days are lukewarm. And some days I feel like, Lord, what have I got to give? You know, I'm just running on coal. As I've said before, I'm running on empty. You know, I am cracked. I am flawed. I am just lukewarm. And yet, when it comes down, to the end of the day, I want to know that my flavor and that my joy and that the the love of God has encouraged me, my faith, my trust has instilled that fire in me for Jesus. And I will let nothing come between me and my relationship with God. I will not let that become lukewarm. And I'm encouraging you not to let anything come between you and your relationship. That inner choice you make not to lose your flavor, not to lose your zip, but to be refreshed in the Lord, to renew your mind in His Word. Oh, and by the way, there is a teacup on my shelf that has no handle, and I love it. It's old, honey. It's been through many, many moves, and it's been uprooted, packed, and unpacked many, many times. And the handle broke. But do you know that it is one of my favorite cups, and when I pick it up, 
I hold on to it with both hands because it doesn't have a handle. You see, there are days like you that I don't have a grip, that I can't get a grip, that I can't put my wrap my mind around what's going on, and I can't wrap my life around what's going on. So what do we do? What do you and I do in those circumstances we hold on with both hands? We hold on to God's promises. We hold on to our faith and our hope with both hands and all our heart. So, contrary to what you might think, yes, God molds us and makes us into this beautiful person inside. And yet, Over years and years of struggles and hardships, we may have cracks, we may have chips, we may lose our handle, our grip on life, but God never loses his grip on us. Okay, he is not going to let us go. And I encourage you today to be authentic, to be transparent, To let the light of Christ shine through you. Even though you've been like that little teacup in that shop. And say, hey, I haven't always been a teacup. I have just been a a, a blob of clay. Remember what God can do in your life. Don't give up. Never give up. Because he can mold you, even now, it's never too late. He can mold you and make you from the inside out through all that you go through in your life or perhaps have been through in your life. He is at work in you. And he will, until the end of our time together, On this earth, he will continue to mold and make us in his image, Christ-like in his image. And maybe it's time that you have a talk with the potter, our master potter, and begin to understand and begin to accept all the whys and realize you don't have to have all the answers because it is that result that comes out of the fiery furnace where he says look look at yourself and you can say to him well done dear Lord I serve you through imperfections I serve you Through being flawed, I serve you, Lord, and I will not lose the essence and the flavor of who you are through all my circumstances. But I will allow you to shine through. Oh, my friends, let me remind you to always carry a saucer underneath your teacup because God will give you more than enough. And for many, he will overflow your cup. He will fill it and it will overflow with blessings. Always carry that saucer. And you may not even have thought of that. You may not even have stopped to count your blessings. Keep that saucer underneath that cup and allow it to overflow. My prayer for you is that your cup will be empty enough to keep you dependent on Jesus to fill your needs and full enough to keep you encouraged and uplifted. Thank you for hanging out with me and my little whimsical story. Remember that I believe in you. If you were a teacup sitting on my shelf, I would choose you.
And remember to be grateful, to be kind to one another. And until we meet again, always move closer to Jesus. It just doesn't get much better than that. Hope for the Uprooted with Susan Miller is a production of Just Move Ministry. Just Move Ministry is a nonprofit, non denominational ministry dedicated to the emotional well being, spiritual growth, and ongoing resilience of women uprooted by a move or other major life change. Susan Miller is the founder of Just Move Ministry and the author of After the Boxes Are Unpacked. Around the world, women uprooted by a move are gathering in After the Boxes Are Unpacked study groups. Together, they form friendships and find belonging in a new community while seeking to understand how God is using their move to grow and deepen them. Learn more at justmoved.org, where you can sign up for weekly words of encouragement, subscribe to Bloom, an inspirational publication, and read new articles every month that inform and inspire. Join the Just Moved community and the Just Moved community Facebook group a place to connect with and be encouraged by other women anticipating or recovering from a move.